shareholders. Zooming? We are concerned about our profits for Why fear that? that there could be a reform movement building relative to our incarceration of nonviolent huh. criminal offenses tending towards possession of marijuana. Okay. It's a joke. When you look a little deeper, you realize that the money that is coming from those prison industrial industry businesses is being paid to our federal politicians and to our state politicians. And so when you look, and that's why we called it the mathematics of racism, when you look at the net effect, which is the destruction of generation after generation of vital young men and women in this country, that is being perpetrated by virtue of the lack of courage and the lack of compassion and most importantly the lack of resolve that you see in the American political apparatus and its utter corruption at the hands of the bribery of campaign finance. I could sit here and give you the same speech relative to why it is that our health care is so expensive and, and, and treats people so poorly. I can give you the same speech as to why our energy and our energy efficiency ratios are stuck in 1950 while the rest of the world has moved to 2012. I could do this with our educational apparatus. The narrative of the kitchen table issue for you, whoever you may be, and everybody has different things that are affecting them. You have to understand that, that unfortunately, the barrier to resolving those issues goes to the on-ramp that is the briberous relationship between the funding of our politicians and the policies that they make. So what do we do, right? You're already doing it, is the answer. And, and what I mean is this. What we are seeing in this country, not just in this group of people here, but in groups all over this country, is the internal realization. You don't need me to come here and tell you this. You are, you are realizing this by virtue of being a human being who can consume information, right? And the beautiful thing about what we're witnessing is I would sit, I would, you know, sit there like with Dave DeGraw crazy, screaming at the wall in my apartment in New York, you know? We gotta tell everybody. We gotta, you actually don't have to tell everybody. What you have to do is realize that as you become aware yourself, that the onus is on us as we become aware ourselves to engage and act, which is what is happening. And the course or the trajectory of this is on multiple levels at the same time. So what we're looking at here is a Federal Reserve Bank, right? And, and I want to be very clear, banks by their definition are neither evil nor good. They are a place where money is kept. That's all they are, it's like a hammer. I can use it to break your toe or I can use it to build a house. In this particular instance, and just to infuriate you a little bit further, if David DeGraw didn't do a good job or if I haven't really gotten you worked up at all yet, it is important for you to understand that in addition to all the dysfunction and all the lack of investment and everything that we're suffering as a result of the, the banking system in this country, it's important that you understand that much the same as we assign a special privilege to law enforcement in this country to carry weapons and to theoretically administrate justice, which many of them, by the way, do a very good job of that, and, and, and it's, that's a, a, a different issue. We assign special privileges to banks as taxpayers to allow them a number of privileges on the expectation that in doing so, they will facilitate investment in our communities. It is right. the only reason, by the way, right. that we give banks special privileges. Right. The same way we give law enforcement special privileges is on the expectation that law enforcement will not abuse that privilege, but will utilize that privilege in the interest of the community. We are giving special privileges to the banks of this country and the, and the Western world on the ostensible uh, video, so. argument that that special privilege serves our interests because then they invest in our communities. Over the past three years, at our peak we gave roughly 30 trillion dollars for a brief period of time to keep the financial system functional. <laughs> right now we're probably on the hook for three or four trillion that they still have. We are told that we've done this in order to facilitate investment in our country. Okay. And yet, it's if like you gold. look at the lending from the banks in this country over the past three years, they have reduced lending, especially to small businesses and communities, by one trillion dollars. So simultaneously, they are taking trillions from us, 
while reducing the actual investment that is supposed to be accorded to the privilege of the rights that they are uniquely granted by us, the people. This comes to the issue of awareness and understanding that it is not that, that, that you, your position is could not be more just that your narrative is not a political narrative, that this is not a left narrative, that this is not a right narrative, that this is a justice narrative, much yeah. the same as the Martin Luther King narrative was a narrative of justice, was a narrative of fairness, was a narrative of decency. We are not, we are being bamboozled by the pro wrestling of left right politics to distract us from the base breach of justice that is being perpetrated against all of us by virtue of the two political parties' agreement to facilitate a corrupt banking system, energy inefficiency, housing, health care, on and on and on. So how do we do this? And this comes to the investment narrative. It is clear that the, the large-scale, multi-trillion dollar systems that we all have become reliant upon for investment, our trade agreements, our banking system, and our tax code. Those are the only three things that dictate the flow of what happens to money. Our tax code, our trade agreements, and our banking system. What we're seeing is the symptoms of that lack of investment. The unemployment is a symptom. The poverty is a symptom. All these issues that we are feeling, that pain that we feel, is symptomatic of that lack of investment. And so it is imperative that as we demand a, a restoration of justice in the American government through a pursuit of a constitutional amendment to get money out of politics, which will happen, I'll get to that in one second, then I'll show it. It is also important that we understand that when you are lacking investment from the sort of the super apparatus, that your only alternative is to do what you are doing, confront it, but also make the effort to invest in yourself and the people that are nearest to you in your communities. That's right. Because they may be able to take away the flow of money from the pie in the sky, but they can never take away our ability to invest with one another in order to care for one another, in order to educate one another, in order to develop our own resources internally in order to ensure our own community has its vitality. Because at this time, for as, as mighty as this fight will become, it surely will not happen soon enough. There's no way I can tell those children in the, in the van that you were referring to that they just need to wait for me to get with a bunch of about 300 million people and pass a constitutional amendment and then they're going to be okay. They don't have that kind of time. And so the beautiful thing about what's happening is we are on two fronts. The, 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 the big narrative, we're going to China, we're going to separate business from state, and then today on the deck of the boat, we're going to look after one another through an investment in one another. Uh, and if you'll uh, indulge me, I just I, I, wanna, I wrote down a quote that I wanted to read to you because it struck me when I was coming in here uh, today. Uh, and I feel like uh, the occupation movement and everything that we're experiencing uh, in general, uh, it, that this speaks to that. And it, and it says this, it says, the basic difference between an ordinary person and a warrior is that a warrior takes everything as a challenge, while an ordinary person takes everything as a blessing or a curse. And here is to the warrior and every one of you, and here is to the challenge of our time, which is the restoration of justice through the investment in one another and the demand that our country once again invest in our own people, as opposed to the preservation of their own interests at our expense. And thank you for letting me speak.